Morning guys, it is December 31st, last day of the year of 2013, and I'm here in my garage playing around, I'm going to start, um, I think I'm going to do a series on oil burners, I got a car in there, three yellow, I got a bunch of Beckett's, and basically this is like a stand that I made out of an old um, refrigerant holder that I had in my truck. And uh, it's basically like a test stand for the different Beckett's. Sometimes I get them and bring them home and get them ready to use on a job. Um, get a little can of oil here and I could pump it and we'll be able to run it. And I'm going to go through, you know, the different type of motors, different type of transformers, controls, pumps. And uh, with a setup like this, I could take it all apart and and show you a lot better than on a job there's all kinds of different retention heads, there's different tubes, different tube lengths this is um, like an F1 retention head, see how small it is they got F4's which would give you more airflow there's a lot of different parts to an oil burner but what's good about this is I could run it obviously you know there's no high limit, this is just a test stand I made and uh, you'll be able to see what the flames look like and uh, without a delayed oil valve how when it shuts off the oil sp uh, spits out for a while and I'll try I'll put all different type of controls on there this should be a fun little series um, this is an AFG they make an AF back at AF which is a different fan blade on the inside and um, you know, and I want to run some Tiger Loops and one pipe, two pipe systems. This particular flange is adjustable. You can see it was here at one time. This one is adjustable. A lot of these flanges aren't adjustable. Like a lot of them on the furnaces. This is another AF. This flange come off of, this one come off a of furnace. It's non-adjustable. And this has to stick in. It depends on the depth of the boiler of the furnace. This only wants to be basically just in a little ways inside the boiler or flush. It doesn't want to be sticking in a lot. So that's why like on this one here it's an adjustable flange. I'll be able to prep this burner. And when I run across an old burner that needs to be changed like this one here. Look at this old beast. I took this out of a job. So that's the type of burner that you would take out and you'd put one of them Beckett replacement ones in there to get the people by. They're too cheap to, to buy a new furnace or a boiler. But maybe we'll run that one. That should be a fun little series. But that's the deal. That's what I'm going to do. The Riello right here. These are one of the better, better burners on the market right here. This thing is really nice. This one's set up with two pipe with a Tiger Loop. I, I ran this one a little while different retention heads and stuff there's a Carlin here Carlin burner you can see the heads a lot a little different on the Carlins um, transformers are different the pumps and the motors are basically the same this is a uh, model 99 there's different kind of models on the Carlins but they're similar to a Beckett All right, guys. The basic wiring I have for my test stand is I got this plug that I plug into the wall here. It'll come over to the switch. This will be constant power for my drop light. If I want to test something, this switch here will operate. I got three lines coming in here. I got a white, which is a common. I've got the black, which is on that switch there. Okay. And then I got a red that I'd use if I want to do a post purge if I got a controller that's got a post purge and need constant power I would have that the only way to kill that would be unplug that plug this um this plug okay. but on this control I'm not going to be using that this is doesn't have a post purge that's basically how this you know and I'll just disconnect this if I want to put a different burner on here um, Let's come to this. some of the retention heads. This is an F0. You can notice there's no slots on it. 
This is like an F6. See how big the slots are in there? This is a standard. This is probably an F2, the retention head. So obviously, that one there is going to take a bigger nozzle than this one. And this one here has no slots, which I don't like running these. This is like for a tiny little furnace. Some of the different retention heads. Now there's different um, ends that go on the Beckett. This is the, what they call a retention head, which I like using these myself. Um, less trouble. But they are, they do have different type of heads for Beckett's. So, there's another one here. So you know this flange is welded, so that's kind of limited to what you can do on a replacement. You wouldn't want to use something like that because you have to get that in a certain distance. You're kind of screwed there. This one come off a furnace too. See how it's all welded? So I wouldn't use these end cones. You can buy a different end cone whatever you want this one here I could reuse as an adjustable one that's an adjustable one this one here is an adjustable one all right we'll get started on it I will be going over the basic wiring basic and wiring of the bo the boiler or the burner or furnace or whatever you would have the power coming in from the high limit the high limit always switches off the burner. Uh, when it gets up the high limit, the burner will shut off and the fan or the circulator will continue to run until the um, unit gets satisfied. So basically, you got the power coming in to the safety control, protector relay. Okay? And coming out of the protector relay, you'd come out of the orange. All the whites, the commons, all go together. Coming out of the protector relay, you'd feed this particular unit, you'd feed the burner motor and the transformer. If you had a delayed oil valve, that would also be tied into this. Now there's different, ty different type of protector relays. This is just the most basic one going over at this time. This right here is a CAD cell. And that CAD cell works with this protector relay. You can see the wires coming in right here. Okay. Now this one here happens to be a 45 second time delay. No, actually this one's a 15 second lockout. They make a 15, a 30, and a 45 second uh, lockout delay. Anything over 3 gallons in my state has to be a 15 second um, delay. In other words, if this thing don't fire within that 15 seconds, the safety will trip this burner out and stop you from filling your boiler with oil. That's that's what the safety's for. That's why when you only hit the safety reset one time, because usually it's a 45 second safety protector relay. That means you're dumping 45 seconds worth of oil in there. If it don't fire, um, you know, you're just filling the chamber up with oil. You don't want that. So that's why we have safeties on these things. This one's a 15 second. So what happens if that don't sense the light within the 15 seconds, it's going to shut this safety off and shut the burner down. Basically what happens is when this thing fires up, the motor spins, blows air out. This transformer sends spark down the electrodes to, to light the oil. Alright guys, so I've got the, uh, I'll have the oil to it. I'm just going to run it and show you what the spark looks like on the back side. I got this gauge on here so no oil is getting squirted in there. We just jump this out temporarily for now to keep it running. Now it's sparked. And then the fan blows the spark. 
้าเก่า